Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss the legendary style of actor Steve McQueen and how you can emulate it for yourself. <laughs> Today's video is another installment of our How to Dress Like series, where we profile icons in the history of menswear. Now you can view our playlist here and see other articles of Gentlemen of Style on our website here. Now before we dive into the classic style of Mr. McQueen, let's take a moment and look at what helped shape him in his early years before the Hollywood success. Now many people remember Steve McQueen as the epitome of classic cool in the 60s and 70s in his time in Hollywood. However, his life prior to gracing the silver screen did not always reflect what he would later become. Steve McQueen was actually born Terrence Stephen McQueen in 1930, just around the time of the Great Depression. Sadly, young Steve was actually abandoned by his mother to be raised by his grandparents and an uncle on a farm in rural Missouri. Now, Steve's uncle was one of the few people in his life of whom he had a fond memory during his childhood. Steve later began living with his mother and two different stepfathers. Unfortunately, these men were also very abusive to him in his youth. Steve also faced additional challenges while growing up. A little known fact is that he also battled dyslexia and deafness in one ear. It's fascinating to see how much he accomplished in his life, in spite of what he could have seen as a roadblock. Now, once Steve reached his teen years, he found himself dabbling in petty crime and rebelliousness. His living situation continued to bounce around, from his mother's home, to his uncle's farm, even onto the streets. McQueen was eventually sent to a boys' home in California called the Junior Boys Republic until the age of 16. Now, the boys' home left a very lasting and positive impression on Steve, so much so that he continued to support the Junior Boys Republic the rest of his life. Steve went on to serve in the Marines for four years, and similar to his upbringing, his time under authority was met with much resistance. Steve faced demotions within the Marines and even spent one whole month in the brig. In spite of this, Steve was honorably discharged and left with very fond memories of his time with the Marines. Now in 1952, Steve decided to use his GI Bill funds to pursue acting. Steve found extra income by finding success in racing motorcycles. McQueen eventually moved to Hollywood in 1955. Steve found consistent work in television in the 1950s. The successful TV show, Wanted, Dead or Alive, featured Steve as a bounty hunter. Steve's big break actually came when he was discovered by Frank Sinatra in the 1960s and placed in a film, Never So Few. Steve was cast in The Magnificent Seven and in 1963, The Great Escape. And for nearly two decades, Steve maintained a very rich career in Hollywood that spanned multiple genres. True to his youth, Steve maintained a rebellious and competitive nature throughout his life. Steve became known as an antagonist with his co-stars and directors. Steve actually considered Paul Newman to be a rival within the world of Hollywood. In 1974, Steve was the highest paid actor in the world. Quite a shift from his humble beginnings. Steve was nominated for a series of awards throughout his career, including an Academy Award and numerous Golden Globes. Now, did you know that in spite of how talented Steve was, he actually missed out on some great films like Breakfast at Tiffany's and Ocean's Eleven, in part due to scheduling conflicts, but also because of his personal whims. It's interesting to think about how adding his dynamic presence to those films would have changed the way we remember them. Steve also missed out on Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid because he and Paul Newman couldn't agree on who would receive top billing. Steve's relational problems didn't just end with his peers in the entertainment industry. Steve was involved with domestic abuse with his second wife, Ally McGraw. Now, through all the success Steve found throughout his time in Hollywood, there are a few films that he's known for quite well. The first film being The Great Escape, filmed in 1963. This film being about several prisoners of war assisting 250 people escape from a German camp in World War II. The second being The Sand Pebbles, filmed in 1966. A U.S. naval engineer is assigned to a gunboat in 1962 on a rescue mission in China. The third film being The Thomas Crown Affair, filmed in 1968, where Steve plays a suave bank executive who believes he has pulled off the best bank heist only to run into a female insurance investigator who will stop at nothing to find her man. Now the fourth film being Bullet, filmed in 1968, where Steve plays a San Francisco cop who is determined to find the kingpin who killed the witness and his protection. Now, fun fact, Steve tried desperately to purchase the 1968 390 V8 Ford Mustang GT Fastback. He drove in the bullet film, but did not succeed. Also, in January of 2020, that car sold at auction for nearly $4 million. Steve was married three different times. 
His second wife, Ellen McGraw, was who people thought Steve actually was truly in love with in life. Now McQueen had two children with his first wife, but was known to be connected with many other women and actresses throughout his career. Smoking, drinking, and drug use were not foreign to Steve. Steve's passion for racing never ceased, and he always welcomed the opportunity to film his own stunts. Steve eventually amassed a collection of 130 motorcycles. McQueen followed a two-hour daily workout regimen that included weightlifting and at one point also running five miles every day. Steve also practiced Tang Su Do, a type of martial arts. And in 1980, Steve McQueen passed away at the age of 50 years old from pleural mesothelioma. This is a type of cancer associated with exposure to asbestos. Steve believed that his time with the Marines was where this exposure took place. Now that we've gotten his biography out of the way, now let's take a look at how you can dress like Steve McQueen. Now the first thing Steve was often known for was his choice of jackets. Three styles Steve was often seen wearing was the Harrington, the Bomber, and the motorcycle jacket. The Harrington, which is also known as a G9 or Barracuda jacket, is usually made from cotton, wool, suede, or even polyester, and often has a Fraser tartan lining. And for more information on the Harrington jacket, you can take a look at our video here. The next jacket Steve would often wear, being the Bomber, originates from military clothing that kept soldiers warm. It's lightweight and quite functional. Now we've also done an article on the bomber jacket, which you can read here. Steve also would wear motorcycle jackets. These are made from durable leather that would cover the upper body down to the waist. These are often worn as fashion statements with a variety of more casual styles. An example being the Bellstaff Trial Master leather jacket, which you can find in our video here. The second thing Steve would often be wearing was khakis. The khakis were quite the go-to for Steve because they were casual, yet very functional as well. Now in terms of accessories, Steve could often be seen wearing his Rolex Explorer 2 reference 1655. Also, the Submariner reference 551. Now it's important to invest in a good classic watch. Steve enjoyed Rolex and also Tag Heuer. Finding a good classic watch that is timeless and fits well into your style is always worth the investment. He also wore a signet ring. Investing in a subtle but distinctive piece of jewelry like this is a great choice, if it fits your aesthetic. Steve clearly operated with the less is more mindset. He also found that he really enjoyed tear-shaped sunglasses like Purcells and Aviators. Now it may not be Purcells, but don't be afraid to find a classic style that works for you and stick with it. Now the fifth really important component to being able to dress like Steve McQueen is paying attention to fit. Steve truly mastered the importance of fit when dressing himself. Steve's shirts fit properly without being too tight, and his pants were trim without being too tight, and he always had them tailored with little to no break. And once you find what fit looks best on you, then you know what to purchase and where to purchase from. Now the sixth major component to being able to dress like Mr. McQueen is paying attention to layers. Looking at photos of Mr. McQueen, we see that he was a big fan of jackets, and he would wear them as layers as well. Steve would often wear jackets over slim-fitted sweaters, and this would soon become one of his most identifiable styles. Fortunately, this combination is able to look great on many men. Be sure to stock up on various types of sweaters, and also khakis and chinos, as that kind of combination can be the backbone of a great timeless wardrobe. Now that we've gone over some different components on how you can best dress like Steve McQueen, now let's evaluate why Steve's style works. Now remember, Steve was given the nickname the King of Cool. Steve was known as the person who could confidently and effortlessly pull off a Western wear, a three-piece suit, casual workwear, and have it always look authentic. The best part of Steve's style is that it's timeless. Nearly any of his outfits could be seen as in style today. Steve kept his style classic and simple. We don't ever really see him wearing more than one accessory or pattern. McQueen would wear classic cuts and did not chase trends. Although popular styles of the 60s and 70s were bell-bottom pants and bold printed tops, Steve did not follow these trends. It is also important to realize that Steve was aware and confident with what looked best on him. Perhaps his rebellious nature of his youth played a role in him projecting current trends of the times. Now, Steve certainly had many moments that were not of great gentleman-like character, but his notable film credits and legendary style gives us a lot to remember. Now today I'm wearing a light pair of beige chino pants and a pair of sand colored suede chukka boots, which happen to both be from J. Crew. I'm also wearing a navy crew neck lightweight cotton sweater, which I picked up from Banana Republic. Now I'm also wearing a green military inspired jacket, which I also picked up from J. Crew, which has a really unique hidden hood, which kind of forms into a nice stand up collar as well. Now this is me utilizing the aspects of Steve McQueen of having something that's both timeless, a little bit rugged, but also quite comfortable and casual as well. 
Now outside the studio, if it happens to be quite sunny, I would love to pair this entire outfit with a pair of my classic aviators that I picked up from Ray-Ban. And in terms of accessories, there's some great socks that I would love to be able to pair with my Chaka boots found in the Fort Belvedere shop. In addition to this, I love the different pocket squares, collar pins, gloves, and a host of other great accessory options. You can also find all of those here. Thank <laughs> you.